We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Good morning. Again, we'll say morning to those who will join us later today. As we once again gather in the Lord's name and, and in his presence to offer our, our sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham gave a great banquet on the day Isaac was weaned. Now Sarah watched the son that Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. Drive away that slave girl and her son, she said to Abraham. This slave girl's son is not to share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. This greatly distressed Abraham because of his son. But God said to him, Do not distress yourself on account of the boy and your slave girl. Grant Sarah all she asks of you for it is through Isaac that your name will be carried on. But the slave girl's son I will also make into a nation, for he is your child too. Rising early next morning, Abraham took some bread and a skin of water, and giving them to Hagar, he put the child on her shoulder and sent her away. She wandered off into the wilderness of Beersheba, when the skin of water was finished, she abandoned the child under a bush. Then she went and sat down at a distance, about a bow shot away, saying to herself, I cannot see the child die. So she sat at a distance, and the child wailed and wept. But God heard the boy calling, and the angel of the Lord called to him back from heaven. What is wrong, Hagar? he asked. Do not be afraid, for God has heard the boy's cry where he lies. Come, pick the boy up and hold him safe, so I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy. He grew up and made his home in the wilderness, and he became a bow man. The word of the Lord. The response, this poor man called, and the Lord heard him. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. This poor man called to the Lord Jesus. Revere the Lord, you his saints. 
They lack nothing, those who revere him. Strong lions suffer, suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. This poor man called, the Lord heard him. Come, children, and hear me, that I may teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is he who longs for life and many days to enjoy his prosperity? This poor man called, the Lord heard him. Please stand to keep the gospel. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia. By his own choice, the Father made us his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he created. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus reached the country of the Gadarenes on the other side of the lake, two demoniacs came toward him out of the tombs, creatures so fierce that no one could pass that way. They stood there shouting, What do you want with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torture us before the time? Now some distance away there was a large herd of pigs feeding, and the devils pleaded with Jesus, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go then. And they came out and made for the pigs. And at that the whole herd charged down the cliff into the lake and perished in the water. The swine herd ran off and made for the town where they told the whole story including what had happened to the demoniacs. At this the whole town set out to meet Jesus, and as soon as they saw him, they implored him to leave the neighbourhood. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to focus on the first reading and actually I want to focus on tomorrow's first reading. We don't have Mass here tomorrow. So if you go to Mass somewhere else, go. If you get a chance to listen in to Mass, listen in. Tomorrow's first reading is a real key point in the story of Abraham and Isaac. Today we have the birth of Isaac, which is great news for, for Abraham. The, the promise has been fulfilled, the one that he's been waiting for, the one who would be the, the source of him becoming the father of nations has been born. But what we have initially is, is the jealousy of Sarah. And if you remember correctly, it was Sarah who said to Abraham, you take my servant girl Hagar, you have a child by her. Sarah wasn't willing to wait for the Lord's promises to be fulfilled. She wanted a child and she wanted one now and she was going to get one through Hagar. And so Ishmael comes to be born. But now that Isaac's here, Sarah wants nothing more to do with it. Hagar or Ishmael, she wants rid of them, send them away. That child's not going to have any of the inheritance of my son. The difference between, anyway. I suppose, I think, it's the idea that the, the son of the promise, the promise is realised to Abraham through Isaac. And what we have tomorrow is the sacrifice of Isaac. This one that Abraham, who is a hundred years old by the time he's born, he's waited 25 years since the Lord first called him to leave his land and to go. 25 years he's waited for this child to be born. And now God says to him, give him back to me. I want you to sacrifice him to me. 
and the promise seems to be coming to an end. So in tomorrow's reading, you'll hear of Abraham and Isaac climbing a mountain. Isaac isn't a wee baby boy, because Isaac's carrying the wood that he's going to be sacrificed on, on his back. And he climbs this mountain. We're told that Isaac is loved by Abraham. It's the first time the word love is used in our scriptures in the book of Genesis. It's never referred to, to Ishmael, it's never referred to anyone else. The first time you hear the word love is in the relation of Abraham to Isaac, this beloved son who's climbing a mountain with wood in his back to be sacrificed. Does it sound familiar? There's another beloved son who will climb a mountain with a cross in his back to be sacrificed. The other amazing thing, it's the same hill. The hill that Isaac is supposed to be sacrificed on is the hill that Christ will be sacrificed on. And just as the Lord climbs the hill in obedience to his father, Isaac climbs that hill in obedience to his father. Because Isaac was big enough and strong enough, because by this stage, Abraham's well over a hundred years old. If Isaac didn't want to do this, it was never going to happen. This is about a son being faithful to the will of his father. To prepare our hearts for what is going to come later. The radical difference is God won't let Abraham sacrifice his son. But God will sacrifice his. He won't let us do what he himself will do for us. Because he'll stop. Abraham before the child is killed. And the great line, God himself will provide the sacrifice and there's a ram that's taken and killed. God himself will, in fact, provide the sacrifice. Not a ram, but a lamb. The lamb of God. Who gives his life to the Father for us. The reading of t- tomorrow's first reading is disturbing, I think, but there's a much broader context, and you see, you see the beauty of it. It's to prepare us for what God is doing, what He's doing in Christ, the sacrifice of His Son, that we might live in Him and with Him. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the bread that we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself we share him with you now and blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer you through it of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink <laughs>
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Again, we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me We proclaim your death, O Lord, and therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with the Order of Bishops, with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And we remember especially Maureen McNeil, whose anniversary is today. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, our Lamb, the beloved Son of the Father, who takes away our sins <clears throat> and the sins of all the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. And for morning we pray. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul. And let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Again, we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to say, the painters should be finished tomorrow, which is the good news. So from Friday, we'll be back in the church for morning matter. I miss this, I must I quite like this. I do like the way it works, it feels as if we're all together. But anyway, it'll be nice to be back in the church. So from Friday, 10 o'clock mass, we'll be back in the church. So if you're available tomorrow afternoon about 3 o'clock, we'll get the place ready, get it cleaned up for mass on Friday morning. And also there's a wedding on Friday afternoon, so if you're able to give us a wee hand tomorrow to get the place ready, that would be much appreciated. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We'll go in peace. Amen.